Today, I would like to share my story of how I discovered prana, my secret to a healthy body and a happy mind. As a physician for the last 15 years, I deal with many, many patients and a whole spectrum of illness. I noticed that some of the common ailments are stemming from chronic stress and impact my patients' lives uh, quite dramatically at times. Some of the common ailments I'm talking about are insomnia, uh, difficulty falling asleep, difficulty digesting food with abdominal symptoms, chronic fatigue, frequent infections, anxiety, depression, and the list goes on. I do give them medicine when they come to me for help, and the, treatments, the symptoms go away on a temporary basis, and they always seem to resurface. At this point, I realized this is because I do not have a pill for the root cause, namely chronic stress. So that led me to start looking into chronic stress a little deeper. So what causes chronic stress? The boss, the spouse, mounds of work, unpaid bills, right? Simple. Not really. Let's pause and look at our interaction with our universe, which sheds a little bit of light on chronic stress. Right now, you're all sitting in the audience listening to me, and your brain is either telling you, this is very interesting, let's sit at the edge of the chair and listen to her, or it's telling you, this is boring, let's take a sleep, right? So before I said this, this was all happening on an autopilot, and you were not even aware of this interaction. So being aware of this interaction is the first step to understanding chronic stress. Now let's uh, switch gears and imagine ourselves being in a, in a camp and we either see or hear a lion roar or a tiger roar. The brain immediately starts sending danger signals to our body and the heart starts pumping fast. The muscles are, can either run away from danger or we can choose to stay there and fight the tiger, right? This is the flight or fight response. And remember, in this mode, all the non-essential functions of the body are shut down. There's no time or place for digestion, sleeping, growth, repair, maintenance. Now, in today's world, you can replace that tiger with you know, your project deadlines, exams, proposing to your girlfriend, and so on and so forth. Now, let's see what happens in chronic stress. The tiger leaves, but the perception of tiger never leaves. So the body continues to run. Well, let's take the example. You had an argument with the boss, or with your spouse at home, and now you have to face them again. And the what if? What if if my boss is unhappy? What if if I lose my job? What if if my spouse is unhappy with me? These what ifs or the only ifs of regret, oh, only if I did it differently, the outcome would be different. These are the tigers that never leave us and continue to chase. And that keeps the danger signals in the body on an ongoing basis. Remember, our body was never meant to be in a danger mode for a prolonged period of time. So now your digestion is affected, your sleep is affected, the growth is affected, and obviously you can start seeing how some of the symptoms of chronic stress that I described start happening. So just to pause a bit and think, is the problem in chronic stress the boss, the spouse, or really our own thought process, our perception of our world, right? Something to think about. On a personal note, I entered this field of medicine at age 16 and continued to hold a very responsible job. Married to the same person for 22 years, mother of two kids who are now teenagers, and a new administrative role in my company as a CEO. Obviously, I'm no stranger to stress, acute or chronic. As a younger and less mature person, I thought I could handle this all, no problem. And, um, that, you know, I used to bulldoze my way through situations and or avoid facing them. That was my, of, my way of handling uh, problems. However, I started realizing that the stress was catching up and I started experiencing some of the symptoms that I just talked about. That was a wake-up call. I had to do something to address the root cause. If not, I would soon be a patient taking my own symptom therapies. At this point, quite by serendipity, I came across the nonprofit organization called Art of Living Foundation, which teaches breathing techniques to help relieve stress. The founder, Shri Shri Ravi Shankar, is a world-renowned humanitarian 
who is deeply respected by millions of people um, as someone who's changed their lives, and I am one of those. I'm eternally grateful to him. I started doing these breathing exercises initially on an irregular basis. They sound great, but who has the time for them, right? But then I started noticing the calm that they brought into my life and how much more I'm able to handle um, in the same time. That is when the breathing techniques became a permanent fixture in my life. At this point, I got very curious. I started reading. I said, how come these breathing exercises are helping me so much more at a deeper level than the medicine that I'm handing out to my patients? So that's what led to me to, to this Eastern principle called prana. The ancient science of yoga describes this as a subtle life force energy that permeates every one of us and the entire universe. There's not a modern day medicine equivalent to this term, although it can be loosely translated into energy. Um, so the prana flows in the body through thousands of channels called nadis, and it concentrates in certain areas called chakras. The flow of energy can be likened to the flow of blood in our circulatory system or the electrical impulses in our nervous system. The similarity between the flow of energy um, in the channels in the nadis and the involuntary nervous system, including the parasympathetic, sympathetic nervous systems, and the chakras to the glandular system intrigues me and fascinates me. You might be wondering, what is the relation between this prana and chronic stress that we just talked about? Well, the interesting thing is that the science of yoga states that when the energy is flowing freely in the body and connects with this vast universal energy, we are in a relaxed state, and, there, and this is a high prana state. When there is lots of blocks to the flow of this energy and the free flow is inhibited, it's a chronically stressed low prana state. This was fascinating. What excited me even more was the fact that this ancient science described tools and techniques on how to unblock and allow the energy to flow, flow freely. Remember the pill that I don't have to help treat this condition? I found it here. And the techniques that they described are the postures or the asanas, which are most popularly known as yoga in the Western society, as well as pranayama or the breathing techniques that I've been alluding to, and meditation. Those are the tools that you can use to help uh, the flow of energy better. Meditation. Remember how we talked about chronic stress. Is it coming from the boss or the spouse or our own perception, those tigers of what ifs and only ifs that are chasing us? Meditation has been shown that, shown to rewire and restructure our brain to where these tigers start disappearing, the neuroplasticity. So we relearn the way we think about our world around us. So on that note, I would like to hand over the presentation to my uh, colleague Ram, who's been teaching these techniques for the last several years to share his own experience. It was about nine years ago that I met Prana. At that point, I was a young working professional, very successful. But somehow, I had landed myself into a cycle of chronic stress. I wanted to be acknowledged. I wanted to be the center of attraction. I did want to find out those backward flips, but I didn't find the classes in time. And I changed a lot of things dynamically, right? I bought a new car. In my, cars, in my case, I bought a Beamer. It did get me the att attention that I needed. But it also showed me that the cycle of wanting attention was never ending, right? N no amount was enough for me. And at that point, just like Usha, I found the art of living, found the, the breathing exercises, and practical wisdom that help break the cycle of chronic stress. It showed me why is it that I craved attention. What I noticed is when I did the breathing exercises, when I did my meditation, 
my prana, the life energy that she is mentioning, increased and I didn't crave attention. I didn't want to be the center of attraction. When I didn't do my breathing exercises, when I did not take care of my prana, of my life force energy, then I craved my attention. And this intrigued me so much that I went on to learn how to teach this. I've taught hundreds of students in the past seven years or so, and across the board, the principles of prana helps break the cycle of chronic stress. Very intrigued, right? And at this point, I went deeper. I said, what is this? The more I looked into it, prana is nothing but a spectrum of energy. Now, if you look, Let's assume you have a gauge that shows you how much prana you have. Let's call it a prana meter. I hear it's a patented term now, but it's a prana meter. And to the right of it, you are in the green zone. You have high prana, and you're like this guy who's chilled out. He, he has a mountain of work, but he seems to be chilled out. He's still working, right? Taking things in stride, like, hey, sign me up to this class. And to the left of it, I have my red zone, low prana, even the subtlest of task. I'm sweating bullets. Yeah? So if being in high prana is good, and being in low prana is eh, getting me into trouble, tell me more. How do I get high prana? How do I increase my prana? Now, like our friend here showed, I can talk about reverse flips all day long. I wish I could do one here. But instead, I'm going to show you something very similar. We are going to use a breathing exercise to get prana. How about who wants to do this? By show of hands, who wants to learn? All right. OK. That's my. This is like that guy who's in a, I love me some prana. Yeah? All right. Let's do this. Now, let's sit easily and comfortably. Let's sit erect in our chairs with the spine erect. We'll place our hands on our thighs with the palms facing the ceiling. It so happens that people next to you will know whether you're participating or not. Okay? So we'll play along. Now, let's all say the words, hello. Okay, a little louder. Hello. All right, that sounds more like it. Now, find the person closest to you, turn to them, and whisper the same hello to them as though you're in a movie theater. Hello. Yeah, it's a little funny. Now, a little louder. Hello. Now, we are going to say the hello like that, but with the mouth closed, so it's going to sound like this. So you can do this. In the first of the hello, you will have your mouth open, but the next half, it will be closed, so it will sound like this. Hello. It works. You saw the guy in the swimming pool? Yeah. So let's try that. Hello. Yeah? One more time. Hello. Now we'll say the hello like that, but with the mouth closed throughout. So it'll sound like. Now we'll do it one more time, but with the eyes closed, and we'll pay attention to the back of the throat. Right? Let's do it one more time. Eyes closed, but with the eyes closed, attention in the back of the throat. With the eyes closed, continue breathing with the throat. And as you keep doing this with your eyes closed, just pay attention to any noises you hear. Become aware of any thoughts you might get. How long am I going to do this? Yeah? Whatever the thoughts, just stick to it. Yeah? Just becoming aware of those thoughts. Now, with our eyes closed, let's gently relax the breathing, come back to normal breath, and just stay with it. Just stick with me for a little more. Relax. Eyes closed. Now, with the eyes closed, again, breathing with our throat. <laughs> Becoming aware of any thoughts you might get, whatever the thoughts might be. Becoming aware of any noises in the environment. 
now with the eyes closed we come back to normal breath and just take a few moments to observe how you feel now compared to a couple of minutes ago just taking stock of the situation and when you feel comfortable you may gently open your eyes with a show of hands how many of you feel a little clearer how many of you feel a little calmer yeah the the mind has calmed down all we did now there are several sources of prana we used breath to increase prana the food can be used as a source of prana we have heard several folks say you are what you eat food is a source of prana sleep is one we use breathing practical wisdom is a source of prana if we make the improper choices that will land us in trouble improper sleep and if we worry incessantly chronic that also gets us in trouble now how do i love myself some prana right how do i implement this in real life there is a three step process take a fuel gauge test just like when you're driving you say how much fuel do i have you look at your indicator right similarly ask yourself where is my prana is it high is it low am i feeling like i'm sweating bullets or am i feeling like i'm chilling out simple questions second if you feel that you need refuel find out the closest fastest way breathing exercise is what i have found useful quickest based on the hundreds of students i have taught and finally keep practicing why the state is set and then you make smarter choices the food i'm going to eat the thoughts i have the words i'm going to speak is it going to increase my prana is it going to decrease my prana right just life force i invite all of you to not leave this as a concept try these exercises because prana is the way to a healthier and happier life and i believe this is an idea worth spreading thank you